Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student studying at the University of York and working at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Friday the 12th of August and I am not here to give you your weekly Fusion News update, but instead I'm here to introduce our very special summer episode of Fusion News. In this episode, along with a few bonus stories, we're going to talk about some of our favorite stories over the past year and recap them. And these stories are especially chosen by our own Fusion News team members. Now, I don't know about you, and if any viewers disagree, please feel free to leave your views in the comments. But I personally think that this past year has been one of the most exciting years for Fusion to date. We've had so many achievements in terms of uh, science and technology, but also in terms of collaboration and our budding fusion industry that it's hard not to get really excited. So without further ado, here are our favorite stories from the past year. One, US lab stands on threshold of key nuclear fusion goal. So this first story I am super excited to share with everyone because it is big, really big. It's so significant, in fact, that this week it's featured in a multitude of different news outlets, including the BBC, Nature, New Scientist, Bloomberg, The Guardian, The Telegraph, and many, many more. This story centers around the National Ignition Facility, or NIF for short, a facility in the US dedicated to inertial fusion research. Originally set up in 2009, the original goal of NIF was to achieve ignited fusion reactions by focusing 192 laser beams onto a millimeter sized capsule of frozen fuel surrounded by a gold casing. The idea here is that the intense radiation from the lasers can compress the fuel into the extremely high densities and temperatures required for fusion and create massive amounts of energy. When NIF first started out, however, the energies they were getting out of these shots were a lot lower than they expected and desired. And so they spent the last 10 years or so really fine tuning their experiments to try and increase this energy yield from each shot. The great news is that these fine tunings have been working. So much so, in fact, that NIF recently announced a record breaking energy yield of 1.3 megajoules in a single shot that they did. This record is eight times what they achieved previously this year, 25 times greater than their previous record in 2018, and almost a thousand times better than what they started with in 2011. Now the actual outputted energy of 1.3 megajoules isn't actually that large, it's about the energy required to boil a kettle, for example. But to put this in perspective, in the small fraction of a second that the shot took place over, the power, the fusion power created by the fuel was roughly 700 times the average power generated by the US national grid. Now records like these are always so exciting for everyone in the fusion community, in part because they show just how rapid progress can be made in certain fusion technologies. And they also show how tantalizingly close we are to certain key fusion milestones. In this recent shot from NIF, for example, the energy outputted from the shot was roughly 70% of the inputted energy from the lasers. This is rapidly approaching a key milestone called breakeven, where the input energy and output energy are the same. What's more, with these incredibly high output energies, researchers at NIF expect that they're approaching a regime called ignition, where the fuel can heat itself using fusion reactions. What's also important to remember is that NIF has been operating with essentially the same laser since 2009. And to think how much laser technology has progressed since then, it's exciting to think what one could do if you built a new facility today. Now, despite this incredible progress, researchers at NIF and in the general fusion community are quick to highlight the fact that there's still a ways to go. In this BBC News story, inertial fusion physicist Professor Jeremy Chittenden acknowledges that turning this concept into a renewable source of electrical energy is likely to be a long process and will involve overcoming substantial technical challenges, such as being able to recreate this experiment several times a second to produce a steady source of power. Despite this though, it's still an incredibly motivating result for the entire fusion community. Two, South Korea ignites the spark of nuclear fusion hope. We reported on the exciting results coming out of China's East Tokamak, which achieved confinement of a 70 million degree Celsius plasma for more than 17 minutes. Regular viewers of our channel will know that Tokamak is a hollow metal vacuum chamber surrounded by extremely powerful magnets used to confine a hydrogen isotope plasma at temperatures several times hotter than the centre of the sun. Since then, the Asia Times has reported on another great success story, as Korea's superconducting tokamak, known as K-Star, produced a plasma with ion temperatures of more than 100 million degrees Celsius and confined it for 20 seconds, 
which is the longest that such an incredibly high temperature plasma has been confined in a fusion plasma device. This is an impressive milestone on the path to the realisation of fusion as a clean, safe and globally deployable source of energy. Yoon Si Wu, Deputy Director of K-Star Research Centre, explained that The technologies required for long operations of 100 million plasmas are the key to the realisation of fusion energy and the K-Star success in maintaining the high temperature plasma for 20 seconds will be an important turning point in the race for securing the technologies for the long high performance plasma operation, a critical component of a commercial nuclear fusion reactor in the future. EAST has a very good capability for the long pulse operation and electron heating. K-Star has focused on the ion heating. If we combine these kinds of research together, then we can make the fusion earlier and more reliable. The team at K-Star have set ambitious goals of overcoming issues with plasma instabilities to reach confinement times of 50 seconds in 2022 and 300 seconds in 2026. Three, nuclear fusion startup lands $1.8 billion as investors chase star power. Now this is our biggest story to date, but also one of our biggest stories to date. And that is that $1.8 billion has been invested in the American company Commonwealth Fusion Systems. This latest round of funding was led by Tiger Capital, but also involved big names such as Bill Gates and ex oil giants Equinor, showing the appetite in the energy sector to really get involved with fusion. Commonwealth Fusion Systems' first demonstration plant is set to be completed by 2025, with them being one of a few promising companies following the Tokamak design. It is hoped that this reactor will yield a Q factor of two, where the energy output is double that of the energy input. A related piece is in Reuters entitled Any Ready to Spend More on Nuclear Fusion in Green Drive. And this is about the energy company Eni from Italy, describing the fact that they're investing more in Commonwealth fusion systems this time around. Again, adding to that appetite shown within the energy sector. Now this investment into Commonwealth fusion systems follow the one that we previously reported on in TE systems and in Helium Energy. And it just really shows how fusion investment is really starting to heat up. A really exciting decade is coming up for many fusion companies, and these kind of investments is the only way to get them there. Four, MIT Designed Project achieves a major advance towards fusion energy. Last week, Commonwealth Fusion Systems announced a successful test of their 20 Tesla high temperature superconducting magnet, making it the most powerful HTS magnet ever built. The 10 foot tall magnet was built in collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology as a proof of concept for their compact, high field magnetic fusion design, which relies on the distinctive properties of HTS to make a smaller, less expensive fusion device. Prior to this test, the use of HTS at this scale had not been demonstrated. So this is an important technical milestone for CFS. Their device, Spark, is under construction and will use the same design principles as this magnet for the toroidal field coils. CFS aims to demonstrate net energy from Spark by 2025 and to be producing a viable fusion power plant by the 2030s. According to Fusion Industry Association CEO, Andrew Holland, this is not hype, this is reality. Bob Mumgard, CEO of CFS, said of the achievement, this record-breaking magnet is the culmination of the last three years of work and will give the world a clear path to fusion power for the first time. This test of our magnet proves we have that technology and we're on the way to producing clean, limitless energy for the entire world. MIT's Vice President Maria Zuber said of CFS's accomplishment, this was designed to be commercial. This was not designed to be a science experiment. Five major breakthrough on nuclear fusion energy. A joint European Taurus experiment published data showing that they managed to produce 59 megajoules of energy with deuterium tritium fusion in a configuration made to mimic that of ITER, the international collaboratory project being built in the south of France. This five second plasma may not seem like a long time, but as Dr. Arthur Terrell, the author of The Star Builders, Nuclear Fusion and the Race to Power the Planet said, that doesn't sound very long, but on the nuclear time scale, it's very, very long indeed. And it's very easy to then go from five seconds to five minutes or five hours or even longer. When talking about these latest results, Ian Chapman, CEO of the UK Atomic Energy Authority said, these experiments we've completed had to work. If they hadn't, then we would have had real concerns about whether ITER could meet its goals. This was high stakes, and the fact that we achieved what we did 
was down to the brilliance of the people and their trust in the scientific endeavour. We should also note that JET uses copper magnets. Now, we know that magnets are so important for confining the plasma in tokamaks. And we talk about using high temperature superconductors or even just normal superconductors on the show. And copper isn't either of those. It's a 40 year old machine and managing to produce a plasma and sustain it for five whole seconds is actually an incredible achievement. And these kind of results validate so much of what we talk in the public and the private sector about on this channel. And therefore it should be really, really exciting for everyone watching and for everyone in the field. It truly means that the Roaring Twenties for Fusion are off to a great start. I have two bonus stories for you as well today. The first comes from BBC Science Focus in the UK and talks about Oxfordshire and its role in the budding fusion industry, discussing how it's very similar to a Silicon Valley, but for nuclear fusion. The second story today comes from National Geographic and is an excellent overview piece of nuclear fusion and of ITER, uh, the world's largest tokamak to be built in the south of France. Right, well that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed this special episode of Fusion News and if you did, please feel free as always to leave a like, subscribe or leave us your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, if any of these stories interested you in particular, their links will be in the description and we take a deep dive into these stories in our Fusion News Extra podcast. Thank you for watching.